real though. Look it up. <laughs> Chapter 10. In the gym locker room, Kelly bent over to lace up her sneakers. The last thing she felt like doing right now was bouncing around and playing volleyball. But somehow she didn't think Coach Turk would consider having a good cry and aerobic activity. I wish Coach Sonsky was there. She pulled her Bayside High sweatshirt on over her head. When her face emerged, she was hit, up, hit in the face with something soft. Kelly saw something green drift down to the locker room floor. She blinked, surprised. Jessie was standing in front of her, clutching the green material of her costumes. Only, it wasn't her costume, it was just material. Jesse, Kelly asked, confused. Where's your costume? Here, Jesse said, shaking fistfuls of the material in front of Kelly's face. A piece of material drifted down past her nose. And here, Jesse began to pluck pieces of the material out of her hands. She threw them into the air. And here, and here, and here, and it. Jesse, what happened? Kelly asked, shocked. You know very well what happened, Jesse yelled. You deliberately made my costume so it would fall apart. As soon as. I'd start dancing, the costume would break down, and I'd be standing here in my underwear. <laughs> Across the locker room, Sissy Garlock made a thumbs up signal. Score one for you, Kapowski, she called. Everyone in senior class knew about Kelly and Jesse's feud. Jean Marie Howell giggled. You would have been awfully popular, Jesse. Do you mind? Jesse said, annoyed. Jesse, I didn't do it on purpose, Kelly said earnestly. I promise. You expect me to believe that? Jesse asked, scornfully. You were getting back at me for turning your hair green. You were spiteful and cruel and... Spiteful! Jesse, I swear I didn't, Kelly said. I was just following Nanny's pattern. But she, but she had been distracted, Kelly had thought, worriedly. She'd been thinking about Zack. Aha! Jesse cried. I see it in your face. Guilt. You did it! I didn't, Kelly protested. Jesse, I'll do it over again tonight. It will be good as new. I promise. Kelly bent down to pick up the material, but Jesse snatched it away from her fingers. No way, Jesse said. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I'm not going to let you touch this costume. I'll make a different one. But Jesse, you can't sew, Kelly pointed out. I'll do it somehow. If I have to stay up all night, I'll figure it out, Jesse said. Because I'll never trust you again, Kelly Kapowski. And I'll never, ever forgive you. Vengeance. <clears throat> Lisa had once memorized Cal's schedule when he'd had, she'd had a crush on him. And she knew she had, he had a free period when she did. She also knew he went to the library. When she'd been interested in him, she'd gone to the library during her free period instead of to the cafeteria to gossip. She had arranged herself in this line, line of sight and opened her books. He'd never looked up. And she had never made any headway. But her grades had really improved. <laughs> She's pretty smart. T today she covered, discovered Cal sitting on a window seat. He was bent over a book of short stories. Lisa sat down beside him. Hi, she whispered. Cal looked up. Hi, Lisa. How's it going? Okay, Lisa said. It was a small window seat, so she was sitting really close to him. She hadn't been this close to Cal since they dated. She'd forgotten he had one dimple on his left cheek that made his grin lopsided. Lisa was glad she was sitting down. All of a sudden, she felt a little weak in the knees. Lisa, is there a problem? Lisa gripped her books in her lap. She could feel her palms begin to perspire, and she realized she, she hadn't prepared when she was going to, what she was going to say. No problem, she said brightly. Shh, Ms. Grinko, the librarian, warned. No problem, Lisa repeated in a whisper. Actually, I have some good news for you. Someone has a crush on you, but she's really shy. Cal frowned. Someone? Well, I can't say who it is, Lisa said. I'm sworn to secrecy. But I'll give you a few, hint, few hints. Mmm. It's someone you'd never expect. Someone you've spent a lot of time with. When you see her, you think newspaper. And she was at the Bring Your Old Boyfriend Barbecue. Cal looked uncomfortable. He was blushing, Lisa saw. He gazed downward, not meeting her eyes. I see he said slowly. Is that all you can say? Lisa murmured, leaning closer. Are you interested or not? What should I tell her? Cal leaned back. I don't know about this, Lisa. I mean, it's really flattering, but I don't like this uh, undercover stuff. So, are 
You are interested, Lisa persisted. Do you have a date for the ball tomorrow night? Cal stood up. Look, Lisa, I'm interested, sure. I'm going to, I'm going stag to the ball. But I don't want to talk about this here. I'll, I'll, I'll just talk to her at the ball. I have to go. He turned and hurried out of the library. Lisa frowned. Cal had seemed so uncomfortable. Maybe he didn't like having an ex-girlfriend as a go-between. He'd really seemed embarrassed and shy. This wasn't like Cal. Lisa looked down at her hands and groaned. The school paper had been on top of her books, and thanks to her perspiring palms, she now had newsprint all over her hands. She got up to head for the girls' room. Suddenly, Lisa stopped, frozen. When you see her, you think newspaper, she had said. She'd been holding a newspaper. That's why Cal had looked down that way. <laughs> Mistaken identity. She was someone he'd spent a lot of time with. She was someone who'd, who'd been at the barbecue. And she was certain something, certainly someone he'd never expect. Cal thought she'd been talking about herself. <laughs> That's why he'd been so embarrassed. That's why he'd left so quickly. He'd been too flustered and surprised to respond. Ugh. Lisa thought back over Cal's reaction. He'd been f flustered, no question. But he'd also been pleased. And how did she feel? Lisa sat back down, dazed. She examined her feelings and discovered that she didn't feel embarrassed. She felt relieved. She could finally admit to herself that the reason she'd been feeling uncomfortable helping Nanny snare Cal was that she wanted him for herself. She did have a crush on him. He was the nicest, most fun boy she'd ever dated, and she had just let him go without a second thought. She had imagined that another boy just like him was right around the corner, and another boy had been around the corner, Jeff Racine. But no matter how much Jeff, Lisa liked Jeff, and she liked him a lot. She didn't feel quite the same way about him. There was just an extra pain when it came to her feelings for Cal, or maybe it was a zing. Whatever it was, Lisa wanted it back. And this time, she wasn't going to bow it gracefully. She wasn't going to hand Nanny to him on a silver platter. She didn't want to hurt Nanny, but she didn't want to lose Cal either. No more games, Lisa thought determinedly. On Saturday night, she and Cal would have a talk. She'd tell him exactly how she felt. <clears throat> Friday night, Kelly sat in her bedroom, brooding. She and Slater had decided not to get together. She had told him she had tons of studying to do, but it wasn't true. She just hadn't want to see him. The funny thing was, she had the feeling that Slater was avoiding her, too. Maybe it didn't have anything to do with Slater, Kelly reasoned. She hadn't wanted to see anyone else, either. She turned down watching TV with her parents and a cutthroat game of Monopoly with her brothers Kirby and Carrie. She'd even turned down a shopping trip to the mall with her younger sister Nikki. She had just wanted to be alone. But now that she was alone, she didn't know what to do with herself. Kelly looked around the room. She should do something constructive, she decided. That would make her feel better. Maybe she'd give her room a good spring cleaning. Her mother would be happy. She'd turn a couple of million cartwheels to celebrate. Kelly moved to the desk. She hadn't cleaned it out in ages. The big bottom drawer was full of junk. She tossed everything in there that she didn't know what, what else to do with, like photographs and old invitations and report cards. Kelly opened the drawer. Her aunt had given her a photograph album for Christmas. Maybe a good project would be to take her favorite photos and put them in the book. She reached into the drawer and took out a handful. Jessie's face smiled up at her. They were at, there they were at the beach, and Jessie was wearing this silly straw hat her mother had bought, brought back from Hawaii. It had palm trees and pineapples on it. Kelly grinned, remembering. She leafed through the photos. Here was Jessie on her 16th birthday. She was wearing the blue silk blouse Lisa and Kelly had chipped in to buy her. All three of them had gone to this swanky downtown restaurant, Aldolfo's, for lunch. They, they hadn't had enough cash to pay the bill, so Kelly and Jessie had ordered coffee while Lisa had driven back home to borrow money from her mom. But Lisa had hit a sale on the way back, and then she had had to go home again to get more cash. By the time she showed up, Jelly, Jessie and Kathy... <laughs> That's not them. Jessie and Kelly were so full of coffee, they didn't get a wink of sleep all night. Kelly laughed out loud. She pulled out a photograph of her and Jessie at 12. Jessie looked skinny and gawky. That was the year she shot up to her present height. Kelly had braces on her teeth. They were giggling about something in the picture. 
They were always laughing about something. Kelly sighed as she sifted through more photos. Jessie was in most of them. First grade, wearing a plaid dress. Fifth grade, holding a softball mitt. Seventh grade, trying out for basketball. With Kelly standing by in her first cheerleader's uniform. Kelly's eyes filled with tears. She'd known Jessie for so long. They'd had a million fights and made up a million times. What made this fight so bitter that they couldn't even talk to each other. Boys. <laughs> That's what made the difference, Kelly thought sorrowfully. Guys messed up everything. Suddenly, when your whole heart was involved, things got serious. But my whole heart isn't involved, Kelly thought suddenly. Not with Slater. And Jesse's is. Kelly put down the photograph she was holding. She could, care she could scarcely breathe. For the first time in weeks, everything was clear. She didn't want Slater. She liked him. She enjoyed his company. And he was a wonderful guy to date. But her best friend loved him. And she'd never feel comfortable going out with him, no matter what. She and Jesse couldn't break up over a guy, Kelly thought. Especially a guy Kelly wasn't sure she wanted. But Jesse thought Kelly had sabotaged that costume on purpose. She said she'd never forgive her. Give her. How could Kelly prove her innocence? How could she show Jesse she was sincere? <clears throat> Jesse flopped back, back on her bed with a groan. She didn't know why she was depressed. Everything was going her way. Her mother had taken all the material and had told Jesse not to worry. She didn't have to think of another costume. Mrs. Spano would revive her old sewing skills and fix that one. She'd even found some great silver bangles for Jesse to wear on her wrists. Or wrists. A lot of sks. Anyways, Zach had earlier had called earlier and told her that he'd heard Slater and Kelly weren't going out tonight. So would Jesse mind if they didn't go out on a date? Nobody would see them, anyways. And tomorrow night they'd flaunt their love in Slater and Kelly's face at the ball. Jesse had been happy to stay home. She was exhausted and depressed. But why? Jesse wondered aloud. Jesse sat up determinedly. Enough negative vibes. She was tired of feeling confused. She had things to do. First of all, she had to find the mask she planned to wear tomorrow night. She bought one for a Mardi Gras party she'd gone to in junior year. It had to be somewhere. Jessie stood on tiptoe to reach the shelf at the, top of her, at the top of her closet. There was a box up there filled with letters and party favors and all kinds of junk. She was pretty sure that mask was in there. She pulled the box forward with her fingertips. It tipped and she lost her grip. The box tumbled onto the floor, spilling out its contents. Great, Jessie grumbled. The mast had fallen, and she picked it up. It was black satin with peacock feathers. Jessie smoothed the feathers. It looked as cool as the day she and Kelly had found it. They both loved it so much that they bought the same one. Jessie took the mask up onto the bed and knelt to gather the letters and cards she had spilled under the carpet. She recognized Kelly's round handwriting on the envelope. The girl could never write in a straight line, Jessie thought, smiling faintly. She picked up a postcard Kelly had written to her from her trip her family had taken to Vancouver. There was just one word on it. There was just one word on it. Help! Jessie laughed out loud. She scooped up all the letters Kelly had written her from camp when she was ten years old. The invitation to Kelly's Sweet Sixteen party. The notes they'd exchanged on that sleepy afternoon in geography class in 8th grade. They'd both gotten Saturday detention for three whole weeks. Somehow, they'd even had fun there. Jessie sighed, the letters in her lap. She and Kelly had been through thick and thin together. Braces and first crushes and her parents' divorce. She must be crazy to think she could just cut Kelly out of her life, even for a guy's sake. She loved Slater. I don't know. No matter how much she loved Slater, it wasn't worth it. But how could she show Kelly that she'd had a change of heart? Kelly wasn't talking to her right now, and there was probably no chance of a normal dialogue until Kelly's her hair returned to normal. How could Jessie get Kelly to believe that she'd never been do such an awful thing to her very best friend? That brings us to the conclusion of chapter 10. Still more to go. Uh, hopefully stick around. If you have stuck around this far, um, uh, I can't believe it. And uh, that'd be great if you finished it. You've come this far, might as well finish the whole thing.